This is an upper respiratory culture on a 43-year-old male. There's nothing really remarkable about the patient's uh, history. Um, so uh, what we are looking for in upper respiratory cultures uh, differs slightly from what we're looking for in lower respiratory cultures. So some of the common pathogens that we may see in upper respiratory uh, cultures are uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Streptococcus pyogenes, <clears throat> Neisseria gonorrhea, possibly, Morax cataralis, Canada albicans, or basically just generally Candida, spe Candida species, and possibly some Haemophilus species. So uh, this culture may be collected a t couple different ways. It may just be a matter of doing a routine throat swab from the back of the throat, or it may be by using one of these uh, nasal pharyngeal swabs. And basically what ha how this is collected is it's inserted through the nose all the way to the back of the nasal cavity, and that's where the specimen is collected. Now, I remember in college, uh, our professor made us do this <laughs> on each other, and it's a very strange sensation to have this inserted through your nose to the back of your nasal cavity and have it touch. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at our plates. Now, for this particular specimen type, there's no direct smear done on it. Um, all right, so uh, on our chocolate plate, we have quite a bit of growth. And, you know, from this particular culture site, we can expect to have normal flora because there is a lot of, a lot of stuff growing in there in our nasal cavity. And um, so I see several different uh, colony types here. And one thing I want to remark on is that I don't see anything um, really standing out. So... When we do a plate reading, um, one of the things we have to take into consideration is how much, uh, for example, normal flora is there and how much uh, are, of the, uh, are pathogens there, you know, and how much quantity uh, is, are on the plates. Um, so I don't, I see a couple of things that could possibly be pathogens. I don't see them standing out. Um, uh, they seem to, everything kind of seems to be in balance as far as numbers. So we may come back to talking about that when I get done looking at the other plates. Okay, so here's our sheep blood plate. Now it looks very similar to the chocolate plate, except what's the one feature of sheep blood that we need, always need to check for? right? Because sheep blood is a uh, supportive um, differential uh, media. And the differential part is that we're looking for hemolysis. So we'd be looking for alpha hemolysis. And for example, streptococcus pneumoniae, that would be a, a pathogen that's alpha hemolytic. Uh, beta hemolytic colonies, that would be pathogenic. Of course, strep pyogenes, right? And possibly even staph aureus. So just looking at the hemolysis on this plate, I don't see anything that, that's alpha hemolytic that's looking like streptococcus pneumoniae, and I don't see anything beta hemolytic. I know we see these colonies that seem to have kind of a halo around them, but um, I'm not going to consider those really beta hemolytic. All right, let's look at our last plate here, our McConkie's plate, and that has no growth on it. So that tells me, even though I didn't list any members of Enterobacteriaceae or Pseudomonas as pathogens, from this culture type, I think you're pretty much always going to have a McConkie's plate. But there's no growth on it, so we could rule out all of those types of uh, organisms. So let's go back and take a look at these two plates. Now, really, I see pretty much, as I said before, pretty much the same picture. However... On this plate, the chocolate plate, we do have some colony types I see that I don't see on the other one. And there are a couple different colony types. So we have kind of this gr larger grayish one. It looks like it has another colony growing on it. And then over here, this one right here is also kind of a unique colony type that I don't see on the sheep blood plate over here. 
Now, uh, you know, I have experiences working in microbiology. Uh, there are a lot of things that I can take a look at, and I can have a pretty good idea of what it is. But in this case, I can't. I can't really say what those two different colony types that I pointed out here are, right? So what do we always fall back on in this situation in microbiology? Okay, we fall back on the gram stain, right? So when it comes to uh, organism identification, uh, by and large, the top of any flow chart or any uh, schemata of, of, of uh, identification, the first test is going to be a gram stain. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gram stain uh, this larger colony right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and gram stain that and see. What, what am I thinking? What do I think that those could be? They potentially could be more axella catarallis. Uh, they potentially could be Haemophilus influenza. Now, one reason why we may not think it's Moraxella is because Moraxella will grow on chocolate and sheep blood. So I would probably see what I see here over here. Uh, now, the, uh, the pathogen that I did mention uh, that would fit this picture is Haemophilus influenza, right? Because we remember that Haemophilus influenza is a fastidious organism and that it, by, it requires chocolate plate to grow on. All right, so uh, I'm going to end this video here because usually on these videos I send out a preliminary report, but at this point... I can't send any preliminary report out because I haven't done my gram staining. So uh, as far as work up on this particular culture, that's the next step that I'm going to take.